I'm going to do some history, and then I'm going to do the two Supreme Court cases. The, in the very beginning, the Supreme Court had this correct, and then the 11th Amendment was passed, and then they interpreted the 11th Amendment correctly, and then they went haywire, and then they just started stretching it to, you know, crazy means. So here's some history. Good old New York, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Vermont, Virginia, Georgia, Kentucky, Maryland. They all ratified it in 1794. Now, this is going to be right after a Supreme Court case, Chisholm v. Georgia. So the 1793 case, the court case that started it all, is Chisholm v. Georgia. And I'm going to get into that in a second. So you have Chisholm v. Georgia, and the Supreme Court says yes. In fact, a citizen can sue the state in federal court. And then that freaked out a Senator, Caleb Strong of Massachusetts. So he's an important figure for the 11th Amendment. Senator Caleb Strong of Massachusetts, two days after the Chisholm decision, he proposes an amendment that eventually, ultimately becomes the 11th Amendment. So it was proposed by the 3rd Congress on March 4th, 1794, approved by the House of Representatives by 81 to 9 votes, and it had previously passed the Senate 23 to 2 on, let's see, January 14th, 1794. All right, so fantastic, right? March 4th, New York jumped on it, Rhode Island, all those stupid states. The 11th Amendment is a crock of shit, so the fact that New York and Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Hampshire... And then, um, you know, all those states, Maryland, Kentucky, Georgia, Virginia, Vermont, Massachusetts, 1795, you had Delaware and North Carolina, then 1797, South Carolina jumps on board, and then January 8th, 1798, you have John Adams who declares that now the 11th Amendment has been adopted. New Jersey and Pennsylvania didn't take any action on the amendment during the era, nor did Tennessee who had become a state in 1796. So Tennessee didn't adopt the 11th Amendment. Pennsylvania didn't adopt the 11th Amendment. New Jersey at first didn't adopt it. So these are great, you know, intelligent states, right? They're kind of like, what do you mean? This is a dumb amendment. Why would we jump on the board of this thing? So New Jersey in 2018, <laughs> one year ago, June 25th, 2018, New Jersey Senate adopted a Senate Concurrent Resolution Number 75 to symbolically post-ratify the 11th Amendment. So, 200 years later, they're going to rush to ratify this stupid-ass crock of shit amendment. In Hollingsworth v. Virginia, 1798, Supreme Court held that every pending action brought under Chisholm had to be dismissed. <clears throat> because of the amendment's adoption. So, therefore, the law of the land wasn't the Chisholm decision, it was the 11th Amendment. Okay, so what are we talking about here? The 11th Amendment. The 11th Amendment is the judicial power of the United States shall not be construed to extend to any suit in law or equity, commenced or prosecuted against one of the United States by citizens of another state or by citizens or subjects of any foreign state. So that's saying that... It, in Colorado, I live in Colorado, so therefore, the citizens of Florida and Tennessee and California cannot sue the state of Colorado, nor can the citizens of Australia or, you know, Germany, and I'm okay with that part, but I, you know, the, if Tennessee injured me, I'd want to be able to sue Tennessee, so it's, uh, it's leaning towards state immunity, but it doesn't say that the citizens of the person's state cannot sue their own state. So I believe that the 11th Amendment actually tells the opposite of what the Supreme Court has decided. The 11th Amendment clearly has omitted the exception that the citizens of a person's own state are allowed to sue their own state. You're allowed to sue your own state. You can't sue other states. Other citizens of other countries can't sue other states. But you can sue your own state. And so, the Article 3, Section 2, it's pretty clear, actually, the Constitution itself. It does say 
the judicial power shall extend to all cases in law and equity. This is Article 3, Section 2. Arising under this Constitution, the laws of the United States and treaties made, or which shall be made under their authority. So this is talking about the judicial power. It extends to, it extends everywhere, okay? It extends to all cases in law and equity, so criminal and uh, civil, that arise under this Constitution, the laws of the United States and treaties made, or which shall be made under their authority to all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers and consuls, to all cases of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction, to controversies to which the United States shall be a party, to controversies between two or more states, between a state and citizens of another state, between citizens of different states, between citizens of the same state, claiming lands under grants of different states and between the state or citizens thereof and foreign states, citizens, and subjects. <laughs> in all cases affecting ambassadors, other public ministers, and consuls, and those in which a state shall be party, the Supreme Court shall have original jurisdiction. In all the other cases before mentioned, the Supreme Court shall have appellate jurisdiction both as to law and fact with such exceptions and under such regulations as the Congress shall make. Then the trial of all crimes except in cases of impeachment shall be by jury, and such trial shall be held in the state where the said crimes shall have been committed, but not when not, but when not committed within any state, the trial shall be at the place or places as the Congress may by law have it directed. Okay. So essentially it's saying they get all the juris all the judicial power in the world, right? Between that person, this person, that state, that country, this, that, everywhere. So they get all the power everywhere. And then the right to trial by jury, right? We get that too. So that's the power of the judicial branch. So that's you know, that's quite a bit of power right there, right? And it it's all in one Supreme Court and then whatever inferior courts the Congress thinks that they need. So that's a lot of power. And uh, so the 11th Amendment restricts the power of other citizens suing that state or other citizens of a country. So other citizens of the state of another state or other citizens of another country cannot sue Colorado, no matter what Colorado does to you. No matter what. Sorry, Tennessee citizen. You know, we might have lobbed a bomb, but, you know, you can't sue us. <laughs> Not the state, at least. You have to figure out some other way. So, Article 3, Section 2, right? Controversies between a state and the citizens of another state. Clearly says that. Um, so, the 11th Amendment changes the power, and it just says that citizens of other states and other countries can't sue that state. It doesn't say that the citizen cannot sue its own state. Eventually, the Supreme Court case is going to say that. The Supreme Court, uh, you know, whatever, the stare decisis. So, that's the history. You have Chisholm v. Georgia, 1793. That suit says that a citizen of South Carolina can sue the state of Georgia in order to get their money back. The other states were scared. Caleb Strong of Massachusetts proposed the 11th Amendment within one to two years. Most of the states had ratified it, and then a couple years later it became the 11th Amendment. In New Jersey, fucking 200 years later to make the wrong decision. <laughs> so the 1793 decision, I want to talk about it. So you had two South Carolina men, and they wanted to sue the state of Georgia because they were the executor of Robert Farquhar's estate. So Robert Farquhar had given the state of Georgia some goods to fight in the American Revolutionary War. So Robert Farquhar had supplied a service. He delivered the goods. He had a contract for money, but he never got paid. So Robert Farquhar did his part. Now he's owed money by the state of Georgia. So Alexander Chisholm, Alexander Chisholm, he is the executor of Robert Farquhar's estate. Uh, did I say there were brothers? It's just two South Carolina men. Okay, so um, um, the Alexander Chisholm is the executor. That's why it's Chisholm v. Georgia. 
So he's the one that's in charge of Robert Farquhar's estate, so I guess Robert dies. But since the state of Georgia still owed Robert Farquhar, Alexander Chisholm was suing, so they pay him back for the goods that he delivered to help in the fight in the American Revolutionary War. He was promised money. He never got paid. You know, he helped with the war effort. He deserves to get paid for his efforts. So Alexander Chisholm was right. The 11th Amendment overturns the Chisholm decision. So what could that person do? Right? You're two, two people in South Carolina. They are owed money from Georgia, and you can't go to the federal government to sue Georgia to get the money that Georgia owes you? You're not allowed to do that? They all freaked out because that goes against sovereign immunity. So, if anything, the citizens should have so sovereign immunity. I thought we were against tyranny. That's a principle that the founders and the American Revolutionary Warrior badasses believed in, th to fight against tyranny. Sovereign immunity is tyranny. You can't get more tyrannical than that, immunity. No, nope. no, we all get immunity. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Justice John Marshall Harlan, he thought that the Chisholm decision had been decided properly. So it is. It's proper. This is perfect. That's exactly right. Uh, Robert Farquhar was owed some money by Georgia. He died. And then the executor of his estate, Alexander Chisholm, sued Georgia to get that money back. Georgia owes Alexander Chisholm whatever they owed Robert Farquhar. So the uh, citizen of South Carolina sued Georgia for unpaid debts, and then Georgia doesn't even go to court. They claim that the federal courts weren't allowed to hear the suits, so they refused to appear before the Supreme Court. Supreme Court ruled by a 4-1 vote in 1793 that Alexander Chisholm's suit against Georgia could proceed in federal court. The court relied in part on text of Article 3 explaining that between encompasses suits by and against a state. So South Carolina, Alexander Chisholm, Robert Farquhar, they sue the state of Georgia over payments due to him for goods that he supplied Georgia during the American Revolutionary War. The United States Attorney General Edmund Randolph argued the case for the plaintiff before the court. The defendant, Georgia, refused to appear said that they're a sovereign state. They get immunity. They, they don't have to show up. You cannot sue us unless we give you our consent. Who would ever consent to being sued? Please, can I sue you? Please, please, please let me sue you. No, I do not consent. <laughs> the court's decision, in a four-to-one decision, the court ruled in favor of the plaintiff. So they sided with Robert Farquhar and Alexander Chisholm and said that the state of Georgia owed them money, so therefore they needed to pay. That's Chief Justice John Jay and the Associate Justices John Blair, James Wilson, and William Cushing. They constituted the majority, only Justice Iredell dissented. So the J John Jay, right, so that's what, four to one? Four to one, they said that... Chisholm was in the right, and he was. He was owed money. Georgia needs to pay. So, this is great, right? The Supreme Court case, the John Jay Court of 1793, they knew how to interpret the 11th Amendment. Uh, they knew how to interpret the powers of the judicial branch correctly, and that's the way it should have been. How the states and everybody, everybody got ratified the 11th Amendment, it's fucking bullshit. It's crazy. They must have been, you know, had been forced down their throats. A lot of bullshit propaganda. So, the, that's the way it ought to be. The way it ought to be. Yes, you should be able to use the federal court to sue another state if they owe you money. Where else can you go? If Georgia says, nope, we're not going to listen to you, you're in another state. Well, then what do you do? You can sue in South Carolina, but then what? South Carolina has to enforce it. They don't really have any jurisdiction. It has to be the federal government. It has to be the federal government. So, okay, now that was the court case that started it all, and so I explained the details of it just to show you that the Supreme Court was correct in that decision, that the, the 11th Amendment was to overturn Chisholm. So it was to say that what happened with the Chisholm decision wasn't correct. It was correct. The Chisholm decision was correct. And then the 11th Amendment gets passed, you know, that is life. So now what is the law of the land?
So now you got the Cohens v. Virginia in 1821. So you have, you know, 1793 Chisholm decision, and then 17-something, 90-something, the 11th Amendment. Now 1821, so it's about 20 years later, 20, 30 years later, after the 11th Amendment has been passed. The Supreme Court in Cohen's v. Virginia, 1821, rejected the challenge to its jurisdiction to review a state court decision in a criminal case in which Virginia prosecuted two brothers from Virginia for the crime of selling lottery tickets. Now, the Cohen's, the two brothers who were from Virginia selling lottery tickets, said that the federal statute allowed them to sell lottery tickets and ticket sales. The court first concluded that as the Constitution originally stood, the appellate jurisdiction of this court in all cases arising under the Constitution, laws, and treaties of the United States was not arrested by the circumstance that a state was a party. Turning to the 11th Amendment, the court noted that a defendant who seeks appellate review of an adverse decision does not commence or prosecute a suit against the state. So by looking at an appellate review of an adverse decision, that is not a suit against the state. That's an appeals decision, which is something different, right? That's not anybody being charged with a crime. It's just uh, the appeals is looking at the processes and making sure that the process in the, the court, you know, um, the system, the court was fair in its processes. Moreover, the court said the amendment would not in any event apply because the Cohens were citizens of Virginia, and thus their appeal against Virginia was not by a citizen of another state or by a citizen or subject of any foreign state, which is the exact language of the 11th Amendment. So the Cohens v. Virginia decision is exactly how the 11th Amendment needs to be interpreted today, and it's not. So what the 11th Amendment says verbatim, and the Cohen decision, 1821 Cohen's decision, says that citizens of your own state, a citizen, you could sue your own state. You're not allowed to sue other states, but you could sue your own state. So when they said that the Cohen's weren't allowed to use the federal court to enforce the federal statute, they said, yes, they can. This was against the state of Virginia, and they were citizens of Virginia, so therefore they were allowed to bring a suit against Virginia. So the 11th Amendment didn't even apply. So the Cohen's decision when it comes to the 11th Amendment was 100% accurate. So it was right and proper for the Cohen brothers to have sued the state of Virginia in defense of a federal statute. The Cohen brothers were citizens of Virginia, so therefore they could bring a federal lawsuit against their own state, the state that they live in, the great Commonwealth of Virginia. So that's the perfect interpretation of the words of the 11th Amendment. The early court decisions, they had it right. Chisholm decision, they interpret the Constitution correctly, and ultimately it's the way it should have been. But the 11th Amendment changed things. Okay, fine. Now we got the 11th Amendment. The Cohen decision, uh, the Cohen decision is the correct interpretation of the 11th Amendment, but they're going to take more power as the years go on. And so I think that's... I'm going to end it off there, right? You got a little bit of history. Fucking New Jersey, 200 years later. What the fuck? Only Pennsylvania and Tennessee stood up against this thing. And the uh, 11th Amendment is bullshit. But the decisions, you know, uh, right afterwards, it was the correct interpretation. So the 1821 Cohens v. Virginia, 1821 Cohens v. Virginia case, they said that citizens can sue their own state. And then the Chisholm v. Georgia case, 1793, it says that the citizens could use the federal court. One citizen of another state could use the federal court to sue the state, uh, to sue another state. So two South Carolina citizens can sue Georgia through the federal courts in order to get them to pay back the debt that they owed because they delivered goods to help them fight for the war of independence, the Revolutionary War, and they didn't get paid. So Georgia owed Chisholm some money. So the Chisholm decision was correct. The 11th Amendment was bullshit. It was wrong. But that's the law of the land. So now we have, you know, the new interpretation, Cohen's, and the new interpretation was correct. 
So eventually we're going to have some stupid court cases and they're going to extend the to where citizens can't even sue their own state. They're going to extend the 11th Amendment to mean sovereign immunity, even though sovereign immunity was not spelled out. It was not written to be sovereign immunity. They're taking more power than what they uh, what the Constitution allows. So big shocker there. That's what all these damn branches of government, that's what they all do. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Jealously guard their power. So I'm going to get up to the stupid court cases, I guess, in the next one. But anyways, that's, uh, again, I'll just repeat the court cases because it's 1821, Cohen's v. Virginia, correct interpretation. Chisholm v. Georgia, 1793. Both of those were good interpretations of the law. And we should be listening to Cohen's to determine how we interpret the 11th Amendment today. The 11th Amendment shouldn't even be a, a part of American law to begin with. I should be allowed to sue not only my own state, but every other state in the nation, in, in, plus America. I should be allowed to sue anybody and everybody I want to. <laughs> if it's a frivolous case, throw it out. If it's a serious case, keep it. You know, throw out the dumb cases, but don't tell me that what, you know, that group of people over there get immunity. Fuck you. Nobody gets immunity. The rule of law says everybody's got to, you know, listen to the law. So we all got to comply, including the goddamn state. All right.